by the grace of our Lord, we're going to read from the New Testament, the letter to Romans, chapter 8 and verse 24. We're going to read from the letter to Romans, chapter 8 and verse 24. Romans 8, 24. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, so the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he may be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, whom he called, these also he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And let us also go to chapter 9 and verse 20, uh, 14. We're also going to read from chapter 9, the Romans, and verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there un unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on, on whomever I will have compassion. So then... It is not of him who wills, or not of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, For this, this very purpose I have raised you up, that I may, may sow my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Therefore he has mercy on whom he wills, and whom he wills he hardens. Who will say to me then, Why does he still find fault? For who has resisted his will? But indeed, O oh man, who are you that reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who formed it, Why have you made me like this? Does not the potter have power over the clay? From the same lump he to, he has the power from the same lump to make one vessel of honor for honor and another of dishonor. What if God wastes wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known and endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath prepared for destruction and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he prepared beforehand for glory even us whom he called not of the jews only but also from the gentiles i mean it is written and the word of the Lord cannot be undone. That everything is working for the good for the people that are loving God. Everything in our lives God is doing for our good as long as we love God. Not with words and mouth but rather with actions and truth, as God himself in Christ says, that he who has my commandments and keeps them, he is the one that loves me. If, therefore, you have the commandments of God, and the, the person cannot have the commandments of God unless God himself reveals them to him, the person of God cannot read and study the word of the Lord, unless God acts upon him and takes action. And the person cannot surely keep those commandments, these commandments, unless God, through Christ, intervenes as it is written that without me you're not able to do anything. Therefore, 
it is up to us. The word of the Lord has been given to us. The ability to act upon it and keep it has, is given and will be given to us. In other words, we can. But because God has created us according to His image and His likeness, and He has given us the opportunity to complete freedom and absolute freedom, it is up to us at the end. We can. It's not whether we can or not, is it? But it is whether we want or not, because this is the critical point. Do you want to? As God has set you free from all your mistakes and sins, and He's cleansing you and continues on cleaning us and cleansing us from, with His blood from all our sins, do you want to become a servant of God? In other words, to become from the ones that love God and His Word. And that means that He is going to be revealed to you more and more because He is seeing in you a heart according to His heart in doing according to His commandments. Therefore, the critical point is with absolute guarding and safeguarding, keep your heart because through it and only through it, all the things in your life come. What does that mean? What does it mean for you to have a heart? It means the heart is the want or I do not want to. That's the critical point. This is the whole issue. I want or I do not want to. But if we go to God and say, God, Lord, help us to want always only your plan and work and commandments, then God is going to come with his word. And he's going to make us vessels of mercy that he is preparing for his glory. And I repeat that. As he made and he transformed Cyrus, an idolater, a Gentile, and he transformed him. And for him to be able to do accordingly to the word of God, he even wrote his own name in the Bible. If it was not written, probably Cyrus would never think that it, it is about him. If he was not written to the very detail, his life that is, in, in ten lines from Isaiah, that is written as Cyrus and also been given the name as a, of a shepherd and a commandment has been given to him to build the city of Jerusalem, to lead the captives of Jerusalem back to their place. Never, if he wouldn't see his name written on this paper, in these pages, the word of the Lord, he would never take that decision. And his name was written in the book of life. But our name is also written in the book of life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And never we would be able to understand the word of the Lord unless God has cleansed us and baptized us. And we would never under have understood unless he put our, into our hearts to be baptized in the water and dress off the body of our sins. And even more so, we would never have understood if God was not the one that would baptize us in the spirit and power. And we would never understand the plan of God unless God was able to teach us continuously every single day and would guide us and especially if with His Spirit 
he wouldn't talk to us and he wouldn't manage us, discipline us. We are thankful. Therefore, we know now that all things are going to be done for the good to us because we love God with his mercy and power, the power of the Spirit, that is, because we have the word of the Lord and we are keeping it. Help us, God. Therefore, we know that all peoples are edified, n not as a vessel of wrath for damnation, because God is able to do just that as well, but also as vessels of glory. And how are we being edified? When are we being edified? when we are drawing near to Christ so that he can draw near to us and how are we drawing near to God so that he may draw near to me and edify me to become a vessel of mercy for his glory through his word and through the prayer to my prayer in my prayer corner draw near to God says God and I will draw near to you study those remain to those remain in these and then I will bless you and your edification and upgrade will be clear to all people to see but be aware yourself do not boast do not lose your sight do not be led astray by the enemy be awake be aware and be praying so that you may not fall into temptation and especially be aware of the doctrine this is the main issue do not be led astray to the right or to the left, but be found and solid in the foundation of God, obedient to the whole word of God. This is your power. Your power is the word of God. The gospel of God and Christ is the power of God that is saving you from all things. Remain in the word of the Lord but also study the gospel the bible study it's not for us to put it in a corner it's not for us to put it in a place where we can see it but rather put it in your heart study it and our praying corner is not for us to rest but our praying corner is for us to pray as we confirm our sins and our issues so that with the power of the Spirit and the blood of Christ we may go up to the throne of God and there with the faith and by sight many times God is going to come to you and say I was waiting for you welcome do not be late come regularly and he's going to give you direction there. He's going to test you. But what is important is that you are going to receive from the mercy of God. You're going to enjoy the mercy of God. God is going to transform you and guide you and guard you with his mercy. And you're going to find grace in your life through Christ for any issue and need you may have. Of course, there are vessels of wrath, of destruction. And of course, a person can fall from grace. Be aware, therefore, to remain steady and steadfast in the word of the Lord. My dear brethren, this is our hope, safe and secure. that all things are going to be for our good when and because we love God Christ and the gospel of God and we cannot see hope people of Israel and Daniel the seven years came but they were waiting for something to happen they did not know what and miracles happened with 
the hope we are saved and we continue on being saved no matter what happens in our lives and this is a message of God from from the heavens no matter what happens in your life to you your household in the church remain faithful in the word of the Lord steadfast and solid to the word of the Lord Prove to all powers that you are from the ones that love God. And God will make everything be done for the good of you. All things are going to be done to a blessing and going to be transformed to a blessing to you. Everything is going to be transformed to a blessing for you. No matter what happens, do not see it what happening as from the devil. Nothing the devil is able to do. He is defeated unless God accepts us. No one is able to do anything in your life. The gates of Hades will not be able to overcome the church. All things God is going to do for your good, for the one, it, it's and every one of us that love as Him, as a person, as a household, as a church, if we take the steadfast decision to remain faithful, solid, irremovable to the word of the Lord and the guidance of the Spirit to not do anything unless God speaks to us to not do anything unless God is acting in your lives with the hope we have been saved and hope that is seen is not hope but if we hope to what we do not see then we eagerly wait for it with perseverance the work of God in our lives we're not walking according to our own imagination but rather through faith through faith in the Word of God knowing with absolute certainty one that everything is going to be done for our good in our lives and this is our hope, safe and secure, certain and secure. But we also know that God has predestined us because we have taken the steadfast decision to be from the ones that love Him. Please, God, help us. Steadfast decision, solid decision. I want God to guide me, to direct me, to teach me. And I will say always to you, here I am. I mean, help me God, help us God, as a person, as a household and as a church, we do not want to think things, we want to obey, we do not want to think about different scenarios, we want to seek, ask, your voice, your will that is good and perfect then we know very well that he that he predestined and I want to be one of them and I am from the one that loves you that he whom he predestined he also called to become alike the image of Christ alike him and he whom he called these he also justified I am sure that I am called now today God has called us and we are now called but we also want to be justified and until the end to remain with Christ in the word of the Lord that is good and perfect and he who called and remain he also justified and he who justified and remain he also glorified and this is our hope a we are vessels of mercy prepared for the glory of God edified to the glory of God because we are being edified by the word of God from Christ from the Spirit of the Lord 
we are not doing as we want, as we like, as we think. We are rather doing what God wants us to do and is commanding us to do through His Word because we want to be the friends of God. And God says that I'm not calling you servants anymore, but friends, if you do exactly as I say, in a personal manner, in your own time, to you. But for the glory of God and commandment of God to come to you, personally, you need personally to go to God. Not with imagination, but with a humble heart, a broken spirit, and, ter and afraid of the Word of God, terrified, trembling in His name. God, please, teach me the way that I need to walk by. Illuminate in me, because I do not know what to do. And give me the power and the strength of the Spirit, because I do not know what to do and how. I'm not able to do what you command me to do. And Christ says, come. I will go before you in your life. Do you believe that? I will go before you. I will open up the gates, the double doors, and I will break down the bronze doors. And the obstacles I will destroy, and I will lead you. And I will bless you, and I will bless my name in your life. That is why, if God is with us, this is a critical question now, is God with us? Is God for you? Is He? My brother, my brother, my sister, is He? Are you sure He is? Go and ask. Let us not walk in imagination, but go ask. Let us not say yes. Go and ask. We are asking him now, God, are you for us? Because if you are for us, who can be against us? Are we from the ones that love you? Are we pleasing you with our walk, with our decisions, with our wants? Are you for us? Ask him, he's going to reply. He is not deaf, he is not, he is alive, and he is going to reply because he loves you. Ask him, not just once. And let us take the decision today. The Lord says it. Come, ask me. Come and seek for me. Ask me. Call upon my name. And I will give you the righteous end. You're going to call and I'm going to listen. You're going to pray and I'm going to listen to your prayer. You're going to ask me, seek me, and you're going to find me. But when you are calling me with all your heart, according to my word that is good and perfect, ask him. And it's not just a manner of speech, it's a commandment. A commandment of Christ, ask him. Go to your praying corner and say, Christ. Am I the way you want me to be? And if you call upon the name of Christ with all your heart, all your power, He's going to send an angel. I don't know. I don't know. But there's going to be the power of the Spirit on you. There's going to be the voice of Him on you. I do not know, but I know that He's going to answer. Lord, are you for me? Are you for us in a household? Or am I walking according to my imagination? God, are you for us, for our church? 
but let us go with all our heart. Let us not hear this and forget it. Let us not for be forgetful hearers, but doers of the word. Let this day not to be wasted. Go and ask. With all your heart, all your power. Lord, am I where you want me to be? Am I the way you want me to be? Are you with me? Or what I do is in vain. I'm walking in imagination and I'm reading it again. Because it's assurance. Of course the person is walking according to his imagination. Of course in vain he is stressed. He is afflicted. He is fighting. He is pursuing. And he does not know the result. This is the person. And you are a person and I am as well. But I do not wa want to walk in imagina in my according to my imagination. I want Christ. Who is my Lord and Saviour. To be my teacher and my master. Let us not go. Lord, I know that you are with me. Let us not go and say that. But rather let us go with anxiety with fear of God Lord are you with me are you for me are you for us in a household because I have children I have nephews I have sons I have responsibilities are you for me in the church are you for us in the church because we are elders and deacons we have responsibilities are you for us? Because if you are for us, who can be against us? And in that way, my dear brethren, our hope is going to be certain and secure. Because I vow to myself, says the Lord, I, as a blessing God, will bless you, and as a multiplying God, I will multiply you, because you have obeyed to my name and my voice. In other words, take your child and go sacrifice it to me. What you love, the thing you love, sacrifice it to me. And without any objection, the person of God, Abraham, the father of many nations. His only child that was promised to God, from God to him, that was born when he was 100, year, 100 years of age as a miracle. He did not spare him. He did not take his time. But he took his child and he went to the mountain to sacrifice it, to slaughter, to burn it. This is what sacrifice is, to slaughter and burn. He was going to slaughter and burn his own son, knowing and being sure that God would be able to resurrect it. And in that way, my dear brethren, if God is for us, He who did not spare His own Son, but He slaughtered, He burned Him, and He resurrected Him. If His own Son, He did not spare, but He delivered Him up for us all, and for me, and for you, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things to me and you, to us. This is our hope. He, the Almighty God, He who is living in eternity, He who wrote Cyrus, my elect, who taken that king and from a young age made him what he was, 
and you are, ki are king as well. He, therefore, who did not spare his own son, and he sent him to become a curse upon the cross of Calvary. He did not spare him. He, if you are sure and certain that he is for you, if we, I repeat, if I as a household with my ch children, and I'm saying this on purpose, if I say that God is for me, who can be against me? And if God is for us as a church, who can be against us? He who has given us Christ will be able to give to us all things. We are heirs of God. What does it mean for us to have everything? Heirs of God. Co-heirs of Christ. We are going to reign with Christ upon eternity. All things. If God is with us. And let us not walk upon imagination then. I repeat, it is the commandment of God. Commandment of God. Go today and ask him. Do not go and say to him, but rather ask with question, with trembling in the word of God. God, am I walking in imagination and I haven't understood it? God, are you for me? Are you with me? Are you for us in a household? Are you for us in our church? Please, Lord, rectify me. And if I don't understand, please, Lord, rectify it in my life for me. But, Lord, I want in my life to be sure that you are for me. Lord, help me in my weakness. Amen.